Hello, my dear friends. A very good morning to you. And uh, I think all of you are in safe zone. And please take care of yourself. Um, take necessary precaution against COVID. So always use face mask, mask and uh, regularly hand wash your hands. And uh, so <coughs> take care. So let's move to a problem which is the continuation of last class. So in the last class we discussed a problem regarding superposition principle. So finally you found out some current value, no? Some finally you found out some current value. You can directly what? Apply the values and you will get the answer. That means I think the figure will be <coughs> like this, no? The figure will be like this. <coughs> I don't want to repeat the problem again. <coughs> I don't want to repeat the problem again okay so this will be i this will be i1 and this will be let it be let it be okay and be and for first case you will got some value of i i that will be i dash and let it be i1 dash and let it be i2 i2 this is simply i2 and it will be i2 dash okay and you will got in the next station I mean when you consider the next next to source I mean the second source you will definitely get I double dash I1 uh, double dash and I2 double dash but in opposite direction right but that in that is in opposite direction so the resultant I will be <coughs> resultant I will be you can check in your note the resultant I will be it is nothing but I dash minus I double dash and resultant I1 will be I1 dash plus I1 double dash and resultant I2 will be resultant I2 will be I2 dash minus I2 double dash so simply you can apply this I mean simply addition and subtraction no simply you can apply this you will get the answer okay so i don't want to waste time by using that arithmetic and all so let's move to next problem let's move to let's move to next problem okay now write a problem write a problem <coughs> How to find the value of i? So you have to find the value of i. So find i using superposition principle. So find i using superposition principle. How can we find i now? So now you have three sources, right? one two and three sources so you have to individually apply the sources and the remaining source supposed to be switched off in switched off condition right first you have to 100 and apply 100 volt at that time the two sources will be in switched off condition next you have to apply 20 volt at that time 100 and 5 ampere in switched off condition next you have to apply 5 ampere at that time 20 volt and 100 volt in switched off condition so the effective or the algebraic sum of the three will be given the value of chi current i is it clear so let's try let's try let's try so when you whenever you feel so many sources whenever you feel so many sources you can go for nodal analysis also that is also very easy so, but for some problems this superposition principle helps you to solve the problem very quickly very quickly okay first consider the value of 100 100 volt first consider the 100 volt so at that time what will be all other sources will be in such a rough condition that means this is 100 volt right 100 volt this is what this is and this is short circuit right 
20 volt will be short circuited that is why this one and this is 3 ohm and this is 5 ohm and this will be what this will be what 3 ohm plus this will be open circuited now I already said to you that voltage source should be short circuited and current source should be what open circuited so it is open circuited condition it is open circuited condition is it clear is it clear and this is I this is I and this is 3 ohm no need to write that is it clear that means there is no flow of current through this uh, this path right because it is open circuited so you need to calculate only the current i here that is nothing but the total current i that is nothing but the loop current i that is nothing but the loop current i so that i will be nothing but let be i dash i represent it's like i dash i dash will be equal to 100 divided by 5 and 3 it will be 8 it is equal to 50 by 4 or is equal to 25 by 2 which is nothing but 12.5 right 12.5 ampere 12.5 ampere right <coughs> 25 by 2 right 25 by 2 2 it is nothing but 12.5 ampere is it clear so now you got the value of what i i dash right first case next you consider what next you consider what 20 20 volt source 20 volt source so at that time only this 20 volt exists remaining sources will be switched off active sources will be switched off right so it will be simply this will be short circuited now because 100 volt is a voltage source it is short circuited so it is simply short circuited and the remaining will be this and this and this will exist this will exist right this is 20 volt and this is 3 ohm and this is of course 5 ohm and this is short circuit right so and this will be again open circuit right 3 ohm so this is open circuit 3 ohm this is off circuit that means there is no not at all the flow of current through that path there is not at all the flow of current through that path so that the current will be this i will be i represent this like this is the direction right so i represent this like i double dash i double dash so that i double dash will be it will be of course in opposite direction no because positive polarity to negative polarity will be the current flow external to the circuit so it will be like this so that i dash will be now i double dash will be equal to what 1d divided by 8 it is equal to 10 by 4 equal to 5 by 2 or i double dash will be equal to 2.5 ampere so now you got the value of i double dash and next case what is the next case consider this 5 ampere only consider this 5 ampere only at that time all of the sources will be what so, switched off condition switched off means voltage source is short circuit or current source is open circuit so consider this 5 ampere only so remaining will be short circuit condition. so this will be short circuited and this also will be short circuited and this will be like this and this will be like so this is 5 ampere right so this is 5 ampere and this is 3 ohm and this is 3 ampere sorry 3 ohm and this is also 5 ohm right this is also 5 ohm so you have to find the value of current i let be i triple dash let be i triple dash let be i triple dash okay i triple dash i triple dash because i double dash you used once no that's why i triple dash so <coughs> this can be simply done by using current division rule right because there is a flow of current of 5 ampere to the circuit so this will be 5 ampere this this will be 5 ampere no and the current i triple dash will be nothing but i triple dash will be nothing but 5 into opposite branch resistance what is that 5 ohm divided by total resistance that is 5 plus 3 it is nothing but 8 it's nothing but 25 by 8 25 by 8 ampere 25 by 8 so let's do the calculation for 25 by 8 25 by 8 what is that 3.1 right 3.1 or i can write like i triple dash equal to 3.1 ampere and this is in this direction downward direction right so now you calculated for these three sources separately right so this is for 5 ampere right this is for 5 ampere source so now you calculated for three separate sources one two and three right 
so the algebraic sum of the <coughs> current due to the three sources will be the resultant current right so what will be i total i will be equal to what is that here similar current will be same in same direction and opposite current is in opposite direction okay so let's take downward direction now so this is downward and this is also downward so it will be added to the right it will be added to the so it will be like uh, again this is uh, i dash right i dash so i double dash so i dash and i da triple dash in downward position so let's add to the that so it will be i dash plus i triple dash and this is in opposite direction now this is in opposite direction so it will be minus i double dash so our result will be 12.5 minus 3.1 plus sorry 12.5 plus 3.1 minus what i double dash it is nothing but 2.5 so it is nothing but 12.5 minus 12.5 is nothing but 10 plus 3.1 it is nothing but 13.1 ampere so that is the current i 13.1 ampere yes that is the answer is it clear is it clear i think it's clear to you so it's very easy actually it's very easy not at all confusing you just need to what individually apply the sources individually apply the sources and switch off all remaining sources switch off means open circuit to the current source and short circuit to the voltage this should be always keep in your mind this should be always keep in your mind okay how you feel about this circuit theory is it easy or is it very difficult actually if you are dealing with this subject first time no first time then it will be slightly difficult to you slightly difficult to you because it contain more calculations right that's why you may feel very very uh, difficult but it's actually easy okay let's move to a new theorem called reciprocity theorem right very very important reciprocity theorem reciprocity theorem beta <coughs> reciprocity theorem beta reciprocity theorem reciprocity theorem states that actually in any network containing a single active element or single source a single source very very important this condition is single source network the ratio of source to response will be always constant the ratio of source to re response will be or excitation to response in other words excitation to response will be always constant okay let's take an example suppose this is a network this is a network containing one active element which means one source only this this theorem is applicable for only one so single element source single element uh, single source or single excitation network so this network contains single excitation okay and remaining resistance inlet and capacitor or anything no no issues there but it should contain only single element single element this is a okay single element right single element and see let i apply a voltage of v1 and due to that there is a flow of current out i applied a voltage of v1 and due to that there is a flow of current i2 okay and there will be of course some ratio of this is excitation right this is excitation and this is nothing but response this is excitation and this is nothing but x response so the ratio of excitation divided by response will be equal to nothing but v1 by i2 right v1 by i2 is it clear consider <coughs> the same network the same network same network consider the same network i interchange the what excitation as well as response suppose my new excitation will be v2 and this is nothing but the current i1 
darkness is nothing but current I. Exchanging excitation doesn't mean that the same we want to apply there. That is, that also you can do, but there is not meaning, no. There is no meaning in that. So another voltage applied, that means the position of source and excitation we interchange. That is the meaning exactly. The position of excitation and response we interchange. Okay. So we applied an excitation here, no excitation. We applied an excitation here. Due to that, there is a flow of current I1, which is nothing but the response. That means we interchanged the excitation as well as the response. So now the excitation, the excitation, excitation divided by response will be what? V2 by I1. V2 by I1. So by reciprocity theorem, it states that if you consider a single source active element single source active element the ratio of excitation to response is always constant even if you interchange the source and excitation or response and excitation clear response and excitation okay that means this ratio will be equal so according to reciprocity theorem means this v1 by i2 will be equal to v2 by this is called reciprocity theorem. This is called reciprocity theorem. So, according to reciprocity theorem, the ratio of excitation to response is always a constant. Always a constant. Let's take an example, then it will be very clear to you. Then it will be very clear to you. Okay. Let's take an example. Let's take an example. Okay. So, this is a single active source element. I applied a voltage 200 volt here and I can produce a current of 5 ampere. And consider another network, not another network, actually the same network. And I applied an excitation of 300 volt here. And what is I? So this question you may expect in your examination. This question you may expect in your examination because your examination is supposed to be one word, no? not a lengthy problems you may expect in your examination, but one word question you may expect. So this is very, very important. This question you may see. So how can we solve this? How can we solve this? By applying a, the concept of reciprocity theorem. That means definitely in the question they will mention it is a single uh, source network, single source network. So what will be the answer? The ratio of excitation to response is always constant. No? So this ratio will be what? 200 divided by 5 will be equal to what is that? This, this is excitation and this is response now. So 300 divided by i. This will be cancel and 2i will be equal to 15 or i is equal to 7.5 ampere it's very very important so the now current current will be what 7.5 ampere so this type of question you may expect in your examination is it clear <coughs> is it clear so can i rub this i think there is no doubt at all is it clear And next theorem is Milliman's theorem. See, this type of theorem may be asked as a new, may not, as a what objective question, as an objective question. This may ask. Okay, this this theorem, no Milliman's theorem, and all. This problematic concept is very. Actually, it is. Uh, oh no, it is somewhat lengthy. But you may ask a question like a one word, one word. Okay, let's do what is Milliman's theorem.
so <coughs> did you get the idea did you get the idea what is milliman's theorem is okay milliman's theorem is nothing but see if you have so many sources so many sources madalab more than one sources right more than one sources in series with the impedances z1 z2 z3 etc to z i you have you may have sources like e1 e2 e3 etc to ea connected in parallel because we know that a voltage source is always represented like a in series with a resistance that is the, the convention that is a thevenin concept you know by voltage source can be represented like a series with a resistance so one voltage can be represented with a series with a resistance another voltage source can be represented in series with a resistance another voltage can be represented in series with a resistance like you no know, so many voltages is connected in series with the resistance and the effective combination is connected in parallel right and the effective combination is connected in parallel then what will be the resultant what will be the result the result can be represented by simply a same what a voltage source in series with the impedance bus that means this much network can be reduced to a single element in series with a resistance or impedance set a single element in series with an impedance right that is called the milliman's theorem that is nothing but here e i or simply e e e is nothing but this e no this e is nothing but sigma i equal to 1 to n into e i y i divided by sigma i equal to 1 to n into y i y i y i where y i is nothing but where y i is nothing but 1 by sigma i to 1 to n into z i because y is nothing but impedance right reciprocal of impedance y is the admittance now so y is the admittance so it will be 1 by z i so for three element right three active sources if there is there is only there are only three active sources then what will be for n is equal to 3 just an example for n is equal to 3 our resultant e will be nothing but what is that e1 y1 plus e2 y2 plus e3 y3 whole divided by y1 plus y2 plus y3 y1 plus y2 plus y3 is it clear that means in practical case if you have one two three elements some voltages and some impedances then you can convert to a single element of e and z that e will be equal to this is the formula and that y i will be nothing but this is the formula is it clear that means y1 is nothing but what 1 by z1 right y1 is nothing but 1 by z1 y2 is nothing but 1 by z2 y3 is nothing but 1 by z3 etc so it will be like this is it clear is it clear so simply you can apply like this and you will get an effective value of e and simply apply this this will get, get an value of 1 by for n you can calculate this also for n here also for n here also for n equal to 3 you will get y is equal to what y1 sorry y is equal to y is equal to 1 by z1 plus z2 plus z3 is it clear is it clear is it clear so this is the concept of y i pakka is there any doubt is there any doubt actually when we are dealing a problem when we are dealing a problem this will be very very what uh, clear to you very much clear to you okay so this is concept of milliman theorem so i once again i repeat milliman theorem is nothing but if you have more than one voltage source in series with the resistance and all are connected in parallel like a very complicated circuit now e1 z1 e2 z2 e3 like that then you can equivalently convert to a single voltage source in series with a res resistance or impedance in series with an impedance and that single voltage source value will be equal to this sigma i equal to 120 ei and yi divided by sigma yi and that single impedance value will be what z you know that z can be ca calculated like z can be calculated like oh huh? this z will be equal to what y i right sigma uh z is equal to 1 by sigma i equal to 1 to n into y i y i 
that said will be equal to like that so you have this equation and you have this equation bus bus is it clear is it clear so these two will be the resultant value these two will be the resultant value and for n is equal to 2 or 3 you can substitute whatever you want is it clear to you is it clear to you Next, you have to see. Next, you have to see dual Milliman's theorem. Dual Milliman's theorem. Dual Milliman's theorem. Okay, I will explain. see if you have again if you have so many current source in parallel with an impedance form so many current source in parallel with an impedance we know that generally we represent a voltage source in series with a resistance or impedance and a current source in parallel with an impedance right so if you have suppose you assume if you have so many current sources current sources one in parallel with an impedance current source two parallel with an impedance and current source three parallel with an impedance and up to current source n parallel with the impedance then these can be this this all are connected in series now this all are connected in series now and the effective there will be terminal a and b now connected to terminal a and b then this can be equivalent to a single current source in parallel with that impedance a single current source in parallel with an impedance that is the concept that is the kind of it is actually a reverse of reverse not actually it is a similar to what our uh, millimans theorem no voltage source in uh, parallel with the resistance all are connected in series i mean parallel voltage source in series with the resistance all are connected in parallel here current source in parallel with the resistance all are connected in series right all are connected in series so what will be i and z that's our question and here this i will be equal to this i will be equal to nothing but again sigma equal to 1 to n into we have no i i z i whole divided by sigma i equal to 1 to n into z i so that i will be equal to what sigma i equal to 1 into, into i into z i all divided by z i z i okay and this i i is for n is equal to 3 is nothing but for n is equal to 3 how can i write i i is equal to what is that i1 z1 plus i2 z2 plus i3 z3 whole divided by what z1 plus z2 plus z3 and z i is nothing but z this is for i now this is for i now this is for i value and z is nothing but what z is nothing but simply what z1 plus z2 plus z3 for n is equal to 3 is it clear 
is it clear so that is the concept of what <coughs> uh dual millimans theorem dual millimans theorem is it clear to you so in um, millimans theorem we use this term admittance right even i1 even y1 divided by y1 and here i1 z1 divided by z1 bus that's all is it clear to you is it clear to you can i rub this so in a one word question like examination or uh, maybe maybe this may accept this is not, not at all that much important but reciprocity theorem is very very important but this is not that much important right that much important and one more theorem is called intelligence theorem and one more theorem is called intelligence theorem intelligence theorem <laughs> actually this is also very important but no regarding this uh, theorem suppose you ask a problem you, you will not ask a problem like this because it's a verification theorem so according to intelligence theorem intelligence theorem states that the power delivered by the active source will be equal to by active source or active element right active element equal to power absorbed by passive element power absorbed by passive element. this is called the intelligence theorem this is called as the for example suppose you have a network like this 50 volt suppose you have a network this is 5 ohm 5 ohm, it's 5 ohm. Of course, there will be a current I know due to this resistance, there will be a current I, right? There will be some current I, right? And there will be current, uh, let be I1 and let be I2. Let be I2. That be I2. So, according to intelligence theorem, according to intelligence theorem, the power delivered by, the power delivered by active source, no? Here it is only one active source, right? This 50 volt is the active source. So the power delivered by active source is nothing but 50 into I. So this is nothing but the power delivered. Power delivered. And the power absorbed by the passive elements. Here the power absorbed by this passive. Here total there are three passive elements, right? Three passive elements. Three passive elements. First one is this 5 ohm, no? What is the power absorbed here? So power absorbed will be equal to power absorbed will be equal to what first one 5 into y right 5 into y plus 5 into y1 plus 5 into y2 you got this idea you got this idea so if you add 5 into y plus 5 into y1 plus 5 into y definitely it will be equal to 15 into y symbol that is simply energy conservation principle in other words energy conservation principle no the input energy is nothing but the expenditure energy it, is it can be neither be created nor be destroyed that same principle you can apply here is it clear that is nothing but the intelligence theorem okay that is nothing but the intelligence theorem or in other words you can say the algebraic sum of the total powers in a circuit will be equal to zero you can tell what telling intelligence theorem in other words like the algebraic sum of total power in a circuit will be equal to zero this need not be always a single element no single active source no so many active sources may be there that total power will be equal to what the total absorbed power the total uh, what delivered power will be equal to total absorbed power so that is the concept of intelligence theorem okay Okay, let's do some problems regarding this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, reciprocity, reciprocity, millimans. Okay, dual of millimans, intelligence. You write a problem. You write a problem. Three currents. Three currents. I1. I2, I3 
are metatanoid are metatanoid and that i1 will be equal to ten sin 400t plus 60 and i2 will be equal to 10 sin 400c dt minus 60 then what is i3 that is our question it's very simple actually but you have to know the calculation you have to know the calculation so this is a very simple question now this is very very simple question but no don't neglect this simple question because this need a mathematical skill this for this solving this question now you can solve for very long time but in option you have one answer only you know in option you may not reach the option right you may not read up to the option this can be solved simply but you have to read up to the options let's see so three currents i1 i2 i3 and metal node so of course it will be equal to what the total current so according to kcl no apply kcl apply kcl what will be what will be i1 plus i2 plus i3 equal to 0 right i1 plus i2 plus i3 equal to 0 or in other words we have to find i3 right i3 will be equal to what i3 will be equal to what minus of i1 plus i2 right i3 will be equal to what uh, minus of i1 plus i2 correct am i correct okay so what is that minus of what is i1 here 10 sin of 400 c plus 60 right mm. plus what is that 10 sin of 400 c minus 60 right so this is the i2 i1 plus i2 right i1 plus i2 it will be equal to minus of 10 is constant no so you can outset 10 you can take outside 10 so 10 into sin a plus b what is that sin a plus b it is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b right sin a cos b plus cos a sin b right and what is sin a minus b again sin a cos b minus cos a sin b am i right am i right sin a cos b plus cos a sin b right is it clear see better this and this will be cancelled on directly you can this cancel this so it will be uh, minus 10 into sin 400t cos 60 that too for how many times two times right that too for two times so it will be minus 20 sin 400t cos 60 so it is nothing but 20 minus 20 sin 400t what is cos 60 nothing but 1 by 2 right 1 by 2 so this and this will be cancer minus 10 sin of 400 so this is the value of i3 this is the value of i3 so minus 10 sin 400 do you get it do you get it did you get it is there any doubt is there any doubt in question okay so let's do a another question let's do another question it's very very easy you know it's interesting too if you really focus on uh, this it will be very interesting too that means you can play with the equation I, again i can say time saying the same thing you can play with the equation if you know the concept very well you can play with the equations okay write a question find 
I N and Arthavinim at point A B at point A B. I N and point A B and this is short circuit. Point A B short circuit. Point A B short circuit. And one more thing is there. One ampere and three ampere. Okay. How can we solve this? How can we solve this? See, it's given that there is some current and you have to find the value of i n now find the value of i n now see i am applying kcl at node a node a apply kcl what will be that 3 incoming current is always taken to be positive right 3 plus 1 incoming current minus i n equal to 0 because i n is the outgoing current right i n is the outgoing current these are incoming currents so it will be i n equal to what 4 amperes so you found out the value of i n simple simple very simple next thing you have to take take care of next thing what we have to find find r theven right for r -theven. this is for i n and for r theven for R Thevenin, <coughs> how can we solve? R Thevenin means Thevenin equivalent resistance. So, for Thevenin equivalent resistor, is it necessary to short circuit? No. Is it necessary to short circuit? No. For Thevenin equivalent circuit, it should be always open circuit. Thevenin equivalent uh, resistance means it is an open circuit resistance. Whenever you found Thevenin voltage there, the same thing now, the Thevenin equivalent resistance is open circuit resistance, right? You have to open circuit the load, that then only you can find. So, for finding Thevenin equivalent circuit, this will be like what? Open circuit. This will be like open circuit. This will be like open circuit. And the switch off all the remaining sources. And switch off all the remaining sources. So, okay, the question itself is maybe like this. We can draw a new figure now. We can draw a new figure. For R Thevenin, this is short circuit now because all the sources should be switched off condition. So, this is what T, C, this is like that, this is 40, this is 60 ohm and this is you can find, there is you can find. There you can find R thing, right? There you can find R thing. This is R thing. Simple, what is that? When you extend this, it will like it will be like what? It will be like 40 and 16 parallel now. 40 and 60 parallel now. So R theven will be equal to what? It is 24 ohm. Am I correct? Am I correct beta? Is it correct? Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you? Okay, let's check the time. Let's check the time. Okay. Is it clear? So you have to practice more and more, no? You have to practice more and more. Whenever you get a question, please try to solve it. Please try to solve it. Okay. Another important question.
in the circuit in the circuit if i s equal to 0 then i i equal to 1 only i is nothing but this current ok and if i is equal to 12 ampere then i equal to what then i equal to what bus bus so this is the question this is a question see carefully observe the question if i is equal to 0 i is equal to 0 means what it is an open condition right there is no current means it is an open circuit condition so you can write i is equal to 0 condition i is equal to 0 condition like it will be open circuited no it will be open circuited this is there is only what 2 3 2 ohm and vs and that current i will be equal to what 1 1 ampere that current i is equal to what 1 ampere equal to this is vs right this is vs so what is vs now what is vs now what is vs now vs is nothing but 3 into 1 plus 2 into 1 because this current is no zero no there is no current at all so this is open circuit you can neglect this no so it is equal to simply 5 volt so v s equal to 5 simply okay bus so you found the value of v s and next if i s equal to 12 ampere then what is i if i s equal to 12 ampere then what is i i s equal to 12 ampere means i s equal to 12 ampere means this is something which connected this is something which connected if you see the problem carefully if you see the problem carefully you can apply superposition here how see in first condition this source is supposed to zero and only this source exists right only this source exists and this is supposed to zero so in the next session in the next session you can apply only what yes only what yes sorry only what is correct that means if i s equal to 0 means this is open circuit means there exists only v s so you can write here only v s right only v s only v s and if i s equal to 12 ampere means i s equal to 12 ampere means v s equal to 0 v s equal to 0 correct i s equal to 0 means there is only v s if i is equal to some ampere some ampere means 12 ampere means v s equal to 0 that means one source existed here and other source switched off next one what next one what this source should be exist there and this should be switched off this should be switched off that means the circuit will be 12 ampere to all 3 ohm, 2 ohm, this should be short circuit. The other source should be switched off means the other source should be short circuited, right? There is no confusion in that. The other source should be short circuited. The other source is nothing but Vs. It should be short circuited for applying what superposition principle. So whenever you feel a super, I mean two or more sources, you can apply for superposition. Funda rule. This funda rule you have to keep in your mind all the time. Whenever you feel like there is so many sources, then you can apply for what? Then you can go for what? Superposition principle. So, I is equal to 12 means V is equal to 0. I is equal to 0 means only V is. Only V is. So, now you can find the value of I now. Simply I know. No issue there. What is the value of I now? 12 ampere is coming now. 12 ampere is coming now. Split up into 2. What is I now? So, I is equal to what? 12 into opposite resistance. It is 2 divided by total 5. 24 by 5 24 by 5 ampere 25 by 5 ampere 
is it correct is it correct beta amma okay okay 24 by 5 ampere is it clear to you the concept is clear to you let's check the time okay time is there for one more problem okay so very clear i think it's very clear to you i think it's very very clear to you okay i think it's very clear to you let's move to another problem so 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 sorry that problem has not finished so total current right total current will be equal to what applying superposition now so the total current will be equal to i1 plus i2 that means i for first case let be i dash and i for second case let be i double dash okay you mark i i for first case it is i dash and mark i for second case is i double dash and the total current will be for i dash that was what was that 1 ampere now plus i double dash it is what 24 by 5 right so this will be the answer okay you are applying superposition principle or apply superposition principle no that's why is it clear is it clear okay so write an question write a question total resistance forced by total resistance forced by the voltage was having zero internal resistance is draw the figure okay find the total resistance offered by find the total resistance offered by what is that what is that total resistance offered by um, yes the voltage was having zero internal resistance zero internal resistance how can we find how can we find how can we find so the currents are marked like this 5 ohm i let be i and i2 i1 i2 okay this is 5 volt means this terminal also what 5 volt this terminal also what 5 volt clear this also 5 volt issues there so applying nodal analysis now apply nodal analysis node this point apply nodal analysis or kcl you can apply both nodal analysis now so what will be that what will be that so it will be like it will be like no 5 divided by Phi divided by phi. That is outgoing current. That is phi by phi. Again, that is outgoing current minus phi by 10. Right? Phi volt by 10. I1 is nothing but phi voltage divided by resistance. No, R I is equal to V by R. V by R. V by R. V by R. Okay. That is also minus. But R is an incoming current of 4 in phi equal to zero. Right? Simply apply KCL. No, simply apply KCL. Simply apply case here. This this current, I mean, this to this junction to this junction. What is the current value? This is the you know, outgoing current one, outgoing current two, and incoming current one. Incoming current one. Is it correct? Is it correct? 
so it will be equal to what is 5 by 10 plus 5 by pi 5 by correct equal to 0 right uh, 0.5 plus one more current is there one more current is there i forgot this current it is an incoming current now so plus i is equal to zero this is an incoming current now this incoming current i plus these two outgoing current plus one more incoming current that will be equal to what zero so this incoming current will be represent like i and this is i1 this is i2 and this is i3 so you will get minus 1 minus 0.5 plus 0.5 plus i is equal to 0 or simply i is equal to what 0.5 minus 0.5 i is equal to 1 ampere this one go outside that side so i will be 1 ampere so total resistance faced by the voltage source means now you this have what 1 ampere right i is equal to 1 ampere. so total resistance will be r is equal to simply v by i so V is 5 divided by 1, 5 ohm. So answer is 5 ohm. Correct. Minus 1, minus 0.5, plus 0.5, 5 by 5, 5 by 10. Correct, correct, correct. 0.5 equal to 0 or uh, this 0.5 and this 0.5 cancel i is equal to 1 and simply you apply that r equal to v by i so v by 5 it will be like that okay did you get the answer beta did you get the answer so that's all so that's all correct okay so that's all for today and let's continue our session tomorrow tomorrow and see suppose okay what is the time now yes 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 suppose this 0.5 ampere is in outward there is a homework for you i will give a homework for you suppose in the same question suppose this is like this same question for this circuit what will be r will be what this is the homework for you this is the homework for you okay this is the homework please do it please do it same what is r for this circuit okay so let's wind up for today and let's meet again tomorrow oh, until then thank you so much for my classes and for watching my classes